side of his face was all swelled up, the lip was swelled up. So, you still got your eyeball, that's the word, we're happy for that. <laughs> but anyway, glad he's, glad he's okay, it wasn't any worse than it, than it was. Good to see Miss Jean here, she had a fall there at the gas station in Milford. Glad she's doing better Amen. and able to be here, nothing broken that we know of. <laughs> But uh, glad she's able to glad she's able to be here. You continue to pray for all those that are uh, continuing to deal with uh, some sickness. Uh, Jen Patrick, I was able to see her and uh, her husband for a few minutes yesterday. And, uh, pray for Josh. Uh, Jen's husband is a uh, he's a sergeant uh, in the Batavia post of the state troopers. And, uh, his unit got sent to Columbus uh, a couple days ago for. Well, really, this entire weekend, this past weekend, for all the protesting, and uh, so they were up there. He was telling me a few things that happened while he's driving down the road in his patrol car, and they're throwing stuff at the patrol car and screaming things and everything else. And, and Josh is a—he's a military man. He, he was in the army, and so uh, Michelle Gooch or Crone is his neighbor. They live right next door to him, right here off the Snyder Road. She said, I seen him, he was all dressed up in SWAT gear, getting ready to go to Columbus. I was getting ready to leave for work. And she said, I walked out. She said, I'm in tears, just worried for him, worried for his safety. And I walked up to him, told him I was praying for him, was talking to him. And she, she said, aren't you worried? And he said, what about this? And she said, yeah. He said, no, nah, I live for this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Jim said, he doesn't like altercation, but he'll never back down from one. <laughs> but... I said, that's the, that's the military man in him coming out, I guess. Um, but uh, you pray for all of our police departments, all of our police force across the nation, uh, our military. Pray for our president. He's having to make decisions that, honestly, I don't know that some of the decisions he's made that any, any president in our history has had to make. Yeah. Uh, but just pray for our nation's leadership. Uh, pray that uh, things are done properly. In a timely manner when they need to be done. And so just, just pray for all of those uh, in the line of duty, uh, the military, uh, our, uh, our uh, National Guard, of course, has been mobilized through most of this coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and so you pray for them. A friend of ours is actually, uh, he's on the Kentucky National Guard, uh, but uh, he just got out of basic training and he's awaiting his orders as to what they want him to do. So we just uh, pray for him. David Forsyth was his name. Uh, and then uh, we do continue to remember uh, all those that are uh, that are out of work still, still not able to go back to work uh, as they normally would. There's a lot of people that are struggling in that manner. So just uh, just be in prayer for, uh, for all, all of those. So. I know I normally preach, but does anybody else have a prayer request before we go into service? Vivian? My neighbor, um, her nephew, there was a spree accident. Um, I guess he fell the ladder went out of business, and he fell. He got, like, messed up pretty bad. He had to get you know, stable when he had a um, DJ and then broke his fiance. Okay. And the tree, the piece that fell, fell down.
and they found out that he had cirrhosis of the liver. But anyway, when they get to Cleveland and the doctor saw him there, he was detached, and his liver is not needing a liver transplant. And um, I told his mother-in-law, I said, she was kind of shaking her head, and I said, well, you have to just think, that's our magnificent guy. But, but they need to be saved. His name's Phil. each 
other smiling faces and we can worship together. And so uh, my prayer is that stepping forward through throughout uh, the coming months, uh, that we will, uh, our uh, desire not just to be here just to fill a pew, but our desire to be here to learn and to be encouraged through God's word and be encouraged through God's people. We need this. Folks, we need, uh, the scripture talks about the, uh, the gathering of the saints and uh, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. That's, uh, that's for our benefit. That's so that we can, uh, uh, Proverbs talks about iron sharpening iron. That's, that's so we can, we can encourage one another. We can learn with one another. And it's needed. It really is. Uh, and so I hope that throughout, uh, throughout this whole quarantine and shutdown that we've taken stock of a few things in our hearts and in our lives and we've allowed God to, to work in our life and really do some things and then we'll, as we come back into this we'll have a renewed desire to see God move in our hearts and our homes and our communities and in our, in our church. Sister Judy? Um, I'm Smith Land. I used to work with him. His name is Jim. And I ran into him at the store yesterday and he was telling me some of his health issues he has. And I was able to give him a that one that says, where will you spend eternity? Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought that was timely, that he was telling me all his problems. But uh, pray for him. I just pray he gets saved from this. Uh, he promised me he would read it. So. Yeah. You pray for him. Jim. Pray for that he said Jim. Jim. Uh, you put him on the prayer list. Anybody else? service out with prayer, and then we'll have another song by Steve and Priscilla, and then I'll get into the message for the evening. And so if you would like to come to the altar and pray, you can. If you'd rather stay right where you're at, that is fine too. Uh, but let's pray. Pray for services tonight. Pray for services on Sunday. Uh, pray for Grandpa on Sunday. He'll be preaching over at Fellowship Baptist in Montgomery, uh, where Brother Dukes was for many, many years. And uh, pray for that church there. They're looking for a pastor. Let's pray. I ask Grandpa, would you open us up in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to allow us to come together in your house. And I pray that we'll never take it lightly. What a blessing it is to be able to come to you to bring our needs. You told us to come boldly to the throne of grace. And Lord, we're coming tonight. There's been many mentioned. Lord, I pray especially for the young man that passed away. Lord, we don't know condition, a spiritual condition, but I do pray for his family, Lord, that you'd be with him in a special way, and even through this tragedy, maybe someone else would trust you as their Savior and realize how uncertain life is. Life is uncertain and death is sure. So God, I pray you'd be with that family. Each one of these requests with sickness, Lord, I know that if there's any healing that takes you to do it. If you're the great physician, Lord, we leave them in your hands praying. Lord, that your will be done. Many times we don't even know how to pray. But God, just pray that your will be done in each of the situations. Lord, we want to thank you for the prayers you've already answered. Lord, you've sure been good to us. And we thank you for that. Thank you for saving our souls. And Lord, none of us deserve this. But God, because of your mercy and grace and your love, you made it possible that the vilest of sinners can be saved. Lord, be with you. Pastor tonight, Lord, thank you for giving them a safe trip and the days to bring them back safely. I pray that you'd use them tonight to bring the message that you laid on his heart. Help us to receive what you have for us and apply it to our lives and use it for your honor and glory. Lord, I do pray for our missionaries and their families. You bless and supply their needs. And for the churches in need of pastors, Lord, I pray that you bless and would soon be able to find someone. Sunday, Lord, to be an encouragement and a help to the church there at Fellowship. Lord, we love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we continue in prayer, Lord, I do pray that you would be with us tonight as we get into your word. Lord, I thank you for, Lord, yet again, this opportunity that we have to come together in the middle of the week, Lord, gather around your word, gather around your people. Lord, I pray that 
that you would help us to, <clears throat> Lord, have a renewed desire to see, you know, Lord, to see you work in our hearts, in our lives, in our church, in our homes, Lord, and all around us in the community. And Lord, I think, uh, I think with this pandemic, Lord, it's, it's rocked our world. And Lord, maybe we woke up to a few things that maybe happened right before us and we're just not paying attention. But Lord, I do pray that you be with each request that's mentioned here tonight, Lord. And for those that weren't, I know there's many. Uh, many unspoken requests on the hearts of the people, and what I pray that you'd have your will and way in each and every one. Pray for those in our congregation that are dealing with, uh, with health concerns, Lord, the anxiety with this uh, with this virus going around, and they're still unsure of how it reacts to certain things, and not sure on certain answers. But Lord, I pray that you just help us to have peace, and comfort, and knowing that no matter what happens, you're still in control. We love you, Lord. We thank you. Lord, hide me behind your cross tonight, and Lord, that everything that's said and done here tonight be for your honor and your glory. I thank you for the ones that's been able to come out tonight. Lord, give us a special blessing. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother Steve, you come back and listen to this song. Praying, I'm going to need that boat anymore. I do. It's all in Carmel and Cash Hughes. Okay, let's all stand and we'll pick another one. How about them, uh, the, the uh, chicken, chicken lady back there? You want you got a song? God's chicken. You got one? Janelle. Janelle, sorry. Janelle chicken lady. <laughs> I tell you, I'm ready to teach, buddy. I'm chomping at the bit. You guys will just have to come up and stop me when I start teaching again. Be right there. And <laughs> <laughs> she's still looking. It's starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> what is it? Okay, so I'm sorry I didn't read the embarrassment. You're all going to take the whole Right. Okay, what was that, man? 356. 356. 
situations, probably like all of you have, where I think, well, it's okay, and I don't have peace about it, but yet, and I don't consult God about it, but yet I go ahead and go through with it. But there's something to be said about when you're going to do something and about how God gives you the peace on something. When you consult God, you counsel with God, and when you, when he gives you that answer of, no, not right now, or that wouldn't be good for you. And he gives you that peace for you to be able to say no, and you say later on, man, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I said no, even if it's a no. Or when you're unsure about something and God says, go for it. This is what I want you to do. And you're still unsure, but you think, you know what? I, feel, I really feel this is God's. God's leading me this direction and I'm going to follow his leadership and you do it anyways when God tells you to do it and he gives you that peace that even though you have anxiety about it, even though you have some stress coming up in your life about it, God gives you a peace when you start down the path of his will that you know that's what God, that's what God wants. You know that's exactly where God wanted you. Joshua came to a spot right here in chapter number 9 where, yet again, of course, Israel, God's using Joshua now to lead the children of, uh, to, to lead the children of Israel to the promised land, and they've taken over Jericho, uh, and they've taken over Ai, and of course, this wouldn't be the final battle. Uh, we see all through Scripture where Israel is fighting for their freedom, fighting for their lives, fighting for their uh, for their religious freedom, time and time and time and time again, all the way through history. And folks, that hasn't changed today. They're still fighting. They're still trying to defend. They're still trying to uh, they're still trying to protect themselves. But we see where uh, AI wasn't the final battle. But there were there there'd be more cities to be captured. There'd be more cities that there would be battles, and, and they would have to fight. 
in the name of the Lord, but one defeat doesn't lose the battle. Just because you go through a battle that maybe you, you got defeated, it doesn't mean everything's over. It doesn't mean that you've lost it all. God can still step in and give you the victory elsewhere. God can still use your life. The devil's not excited about the, the, the prospect of victory in our life. He's not excited about the prospect of victory in the, in the child of God's life. At the end of this life, if you know Christ as your Savior, guess what? You've already won the, you've already won the war. You've already, won, you've already got the victory. No matter what we lose down here, what, what's to come is going to be far better than anything we have here. And so, so we've already, we already have the victory, but that doesn't mean that the devil is not going to do whatever he can down here to discourage us from those victories, from those, from those battles. He's not excited at all that we win things. You know, it is true for, for the Israelites, and it's true for us today. We have to be aware of his strategy, and we have to recognize when he seeks to lead us astray with deceptive actions. He's pretty deceptive with, with things, isn't he? He likes to be deceptive. He likes to make us think a few things. But in John, I said John, Joshua chapter number 9, we're going to read in verse 1. We're going to kind of skip on down through the chapter here and there, read a few verses, and then make a few comments. I won't be very long tonight. Uh, but it says in verse number 1, and, I, and it came to pass when all the kings which were on the side of Jordan in the hills and in the valleys and in all the coasts of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Perzite and the Hivite and the Jebusite heard thereof. Wow, I made it through all those without stuttering. We're good. <laughs> that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and Ai, they did work willily and went and made as if they had uh, been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their uh, upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up and old shoes and, and clouded up their feet and old garments upon them and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua unto, uh, unto the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country, now therefore make ye a league with us. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, uh, Free adventure, ye dwell among us, and how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye, and from whence come ye? And they said unto him, From a very far country, thy servants are come because of, of the name of the Lord thy God. Notice they didn't say our God. They said, Thy God. For we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did in the land, uh, to the kings of the Amorites that were behind Jordan, to uh, Sion, king of uh, Hers uh, Heshbon, and to Og, king of Bashan, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake. Uh, to us, saying, Take victuals with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants. Therefore, now make ye a league with us. This our bread we, we took hot for our provisions out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. But now, behold, it is dry and it is moldy. And, uh, and these bottles of wine which we filled were new, and behold, they be rent. And these are garments, and our shoes uh, are become old by reason of the very long journey. And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth yeah. of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before the grace. Lord, for just a few minutes, Lord, help us to dive into your word as we 
Lord, maybe get a little bit of insight as to maybe some mistakes that was made here. And, Lord, maybe some things that was done right. But, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to, uh, Lord, help us to look to your word and to you for, for some understanding tonight. We love you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. There was a daring deception here. In verse 3 all the way down through verse 6, we see where Gibeon had heard of what the children of Israel, what Joshua had accomplished there in Jericho and in Ai and how they overtook the cities and, and how Israel had prevailed. And, and really, it wasn't Israel. It was God that did it all. But the countries that surrounded them, all they see is this nation coming. All they see is Israel marching through. They see a leader in Joshua, and they want they want them to have a league with them. They're, they're trying to deceive them into making them think that they're on their side. Folks, the devil will make you think he is on your side. You, you think about the devil. I was talking with somebody. It may have been the kids. Uh, it may have been my kids I was talking to about this. You think about Lucifer. He was an angel of light at one time. Yeah. He was an angel of music. He was fair to look upon. He, the Bible describes him as beautiful. He was, he was the type of angel that people would look to and would think, my, how gorgeous, my, how beautiful. Are the things of this world not enticing? Are they not beautiful? Do they not attract us? The devil is very deceptive in the things that he does. They, they, and, and Gibeon here, they go up and they, they put on a show and they bring them old moldy bread and they, they bring them old bottles and they, they, of wine. They, they bring them all the, uh, all, the, uh, uh, all the provisions that they wouldn't have for themselves is what they did. But they bring it up trying to make a show of, of all, we're, we're on your side and we've traveled so far. And they make it look so good, don't they? They talk a good talk, but there's very little walk going on. We've, we've, we've traveled so far when in all reality they came from next door, right. quite literally. Right. And so the people of, of Gideon there, they knew they, could, they couldn't defeat Israel. They knew. I think they knew with God on, on their side, with God on the side of Israel and Joshua, they knew that there was no way that if Israel did what God had commanded them, that there was no way that they was going to defeat Israel. And they were right. If Israel was going to comply and obey God's command, and if they did as God asked them to do, guess what? Israel would prevail again, as always. Yeah. Folks, in your life, if you would just simply do, if we yeah. would simply do as yeah. God commands us to do as a child of God, there ain't nothing going to stop us. We can prevail. Time and time again. Over those temptations in our life. Folks, we deal with temptation on a daily basis. Do you? I do. Yeah. There are things that look so good. Folks, I just left Texas where I drove. I live on State Route 133. It is a main route out here. It goes around the lake where we live. 55 mile an hour. In Texas, mm -hmm. the speed limit would have been 75 on the back road. Yeah. You know how tempting it is for me to still go 75? <laughs> yeah. I enjoy Texas speed limits. <laughs> when Isaiah was there in February, me and Isaiah, we rented a, a, a our rental car was a Dodge Charger. Mm -hmm. I love Chargers. They're quick cars. Mm -hmm. We're in the, the HOV lane. In Texas, which is it's a, basically a high-speed carpool lane is what it is. You've got to have two or more in a car. There was two of us. <laughs> Speed limit on that was, I think, touching 80, wasn't it? Posted? I think it, was, I think it was somewhere in there. Isaiah drove one night, and he was really enjoying himself driving down the highway at 80, 80 85 mile an hour, flow of traffic. He drives like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. But it's tempting. Oh, mm. just to go that fast. I found, found myself as I come back into Ohio across the bridge. I found I had to look down at my uh, cruise control and see what it 
to set on it and bring it way back down. 65 when you cross that bridge. Don't you dare go over because there is a state trooper sitting right across that bridge. Every time. Every time. But we, we face things in this world that are so enticing. They look so good. Well, I can have so much fun. Yeah, but God tells me I shouldn't dabble in this. If, it, if it's something that's going to get my relationship away from God, I shouldn't put it in front of me. Yeah, but just one time won't hurt me. And guess what? And then it happens again and again and again. You see, the problem was God had told Joshua not to make an alliance with anyone. They were not to align themselves with anybody that was not an Israelite. Yep. They were to keep to themselves. That's what God told them to do. Is I want you to keep to yourself. I want you to stay together. Don't make an alliance because all it's going to do is they're going to eventually just start sweeping in. And it's going to start infiltrating their, their society <coughs> and their religion. Folks, all the way through the years, have we not seen even in the United States how religion just mixes with religion and then you have yeah. who knows what. <laughs> In the end. And none of it's true. Tell me the devil ain't working in the churches. Yeah. He told them not to make an alliance. So the lesson from this is that the devil's deceptive. And he'll use anything to convince God's people to compromise. See, that's the problem, is God's people have gone away from this book and we've compromised, compromised for so many years that now we don't know what's truth and what's not. Right. Now we don't know whether or not the King James Bible is the right Bible for us, or if it's New King James, or if it's NIV, or if it's ESV. Well, this one sounds good and makes me feel better than it ain't the right Bible. <laughs> right. Stop. Grandpa was telling a story about a Bible he got for somebody, and it had the uh, it wasn't a red letter Bible. And whoever it was that he bought it for brought it back to him and said, they took the blood out of this. <laughs> he said, don't worry about it. I'll get you one with the blood in it. <laughs> it was the same. It was a King James Bible. It just wasn't a red letter edition. She wasn't expecting that. Whoever it was, I don't know who it was. It was years ago. But maybe now, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> But we've, we've stepped back from God's word so much and we've relied on tradition for so many years that now we would much rather preach and teach tradition than God's word. Yeah. Why? Because Amen. God's word convicts our lives. Amen. Because God's word, in God's word, there's no such thing as compromise. It's in black and white. What he says, that's what he means. We shouldn't compromise just to save, uh, just, just to fill the church pews. We shouldn't compromise just to make somebody feel good. Well, I know, I know sister so-and-so doesn't necessarily like it when, when this is taught, or brother so-and-so doesn't like this, so I'll just skirt around that. Oh. Folks, if it's getting skirted around, number one, that's on me. If I decide I'm going to skirt around something to yeah. Save somebody's feelings, shame on me. Amen. And if you're the one expecting me to skirt around and not say something when it's true, shame on you. Right. Shame on us when we won't teach what God's word has to say. Amen. God specifically told Joshua, do not make an alliance. And what did Joshua do? He went totally against. Didn't even counsel. With God. We go, we go all the way down to verse 14 and ver down through verse 15. It says, And the men took of their victuals and, and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to, uh, to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swear unto them. Joshua didn't seek God's counsel and thus failed to see the truth. He failed to see through the deception that they were trying to pull over top of him. <laughs> uh, Brother Jerry Jackson, that's Ashland's 
uh, Ashland's dad, he pastors Bright Star Baptist Church out there in the middle of nowhere in East Texas, which is where the wedding was held. He was talking, uh, was talking about an instance. He was uh, dealing with a fellow in town one day and trying to witness to him. He said, uh, he said, he was talking about how how some how somebody was trying to pull the wool over his eyes. He says, "You ain't gonna pull the wool over my eyes." And Brother Jerry Jackson said, "You can't pull the wool over God's eyes, buddy, because He's the one that made through the wool. He can see straight through it." <laughs> That's some East Texas theology for you, right there. <laughs> huh. Folks, if you think. When God has told you to do something in your life and you make it look or you try to act like you're doing God's will in your life or what God has commanded us to do in his word, if you think you're going to pretend, you ain't pulling the wool over God's eyes. Right. You're not going to deceive him. The devil might deceive you. He might blind you from doing God's will, but you ain't going to blind God what he's asked us and what he's commanded us to do. He didn't see the truth. It seemed to be an obvious, an obvious omission, but how easily we fall into the same trap that Joshua did. Here they come. Crying. Trying to, trying to pull the wool over Joshua's eyes, and it worked. We, we, we want to make league with you. Here, we brought you some things. We brought you some food. We bought, brought you some wine. We, 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 we brought you some things that will sustain you. We, we just want to be left alone. We find out later on that they wind up in an altercation with Gideon. Later on. Paul reminds us that the devil blinds people's eyes to their, to their need for the gospel. In 2 Corinthians, if you want to go there, 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. I'm about done right here. It says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the, the, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We will never arrive at the place where we do not need to read the Bible. Right. You will never get to the spiritual place in your life where you no longer need this book. Ever. True. I don't care if you've been saved for 50, 60 years. That's you right. will never get to the point in your life where you do not need this book. Right. You will never arrive at the place where you feel that you don't need to pray. You will never arrive at the place where you don't need commune or communication with God. Sure. You need to talk to God and you need to hear from God. Yeah. Daily. Weekly. Because God's the only one that can keep this mind straight. Yeah. My wife tries. <laughs> but it rarely happens. My mind is a revolving door. Things get thrown in, and most of the time it's going so fast, some things stick, and others just get thrown out. <laughs> All the time. Don't ever get to the place where you feel that you're close enough. Because yeah. it's at that point in your life that you're the farthest. Yeah. If you feel that you are close enough to God, you, you're lying to yourself. The devil's got you believing a lie. Good. Don't get to that point because it's there that the devil can get you and keep you there if you're not careful. There was a graceful gesture. Look down with me real quick. Last verse. Uh, verse 26. And so did he unto them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel that they slew them not, and Joshua made them, uh, uh, made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord, even unto this day in the place which he should choose. Verse 26, even though Joshua and the Israelites entered into a bad alliance, they kept their oath. Yeah. 
Two wrongs would not have made things right. But in the grace of God, the Gideonites were made woodcutters and water carriers for the rest of their days. Folks, whatever the devil can use to blind you, he will. If Joshua would have never made this alliance, now Joshua kept it. The children of Israel kept it. They didn't, they didn't slay the, Gibe, uh, the Gibeonites. Right. They kept their oath. They did what was right, even though it's not what God wanted them to do. Folks, if God tells us to do something, we ought to do it for sure. Don't argue with God. But we need to be on guard and watch him for those things because the devil will throw things, will throw things at us and we'll think. He will make you think it's of God. He'll make you think it looks good, it sounds good, but underneath there ain't nothing, no truth in it. You need to be careful. Allow yourself to get into God's Word. That's the only way that you and I are going to see through a lie is by getting into God's Word, finding out what's fact and what's truth and what's not. Because if we know what's truth, when we hear something that's not, it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. Oh, yeah. Throughout the years, going to Christian school, we always had memory verses and everything. And I've forgotten probably <laughs> more than, than uh, the, of what I've memorized through the years than what I know right now, but it's in there. I may not be able to quote it word for word right now or remember all of it, but it's in there. And if we study this book enough and we find out what the word of truth is, when this world throws us another, throws us a curveball and throws us, throws us something that's not in this book, and you're in a church somewhere, or someone's trying to feed you false doctrine, or somebody's trying to feed you something that's not in this book, you're going to know it. You ever had that, you ever heard somebody quote a verse, and all of a sudden you, you, you get that eerie feeling, that uneasy feeling of that ain't right. That's not what that says. I know it's not what that says. What is that? That's the Holy Spirit of God saying, you know better. <laughs> You've read it different. You know what the truth is. But the devil likes to blind us. And if he can make it look good enough, if he can make it sound good enough, if he can make it sound close enough, he can get us. And why do you say he can? Because he has. He's deceived yeah. thousands, millions of people into believing a lie. Don't let that be you. Stay on guard. Counsel with God. Joshua made a mistake, for sure. But we all do. Yeah. We all say or do the wrong thing at some point. But what we do after that makes a world of difference. Making things right. I'm going to pray, and then we can be, yes, sir.
say anything without bawling. And uh, he told me I got to do it no matter what. I'm glad that I have. And uh, I've had three people ask me at work this week. Now, I never cussed at work. I've never done that. But I don't act like I should. I've had three people at work this week ask me if something's different about me. If I'm feeling okay. Slack on my Bible reading and my prayer. Wednesday night after service and the kids were playing in the play area. It was just me and Lindsay and 
the days had left, they were there, I think Mary Claude had been there that night, and they all left, and it's just Lindsay and I let the kid play for a few minutes before we left, and here comes Janelle. She was off work, she had food with her, she sits down, she started grilling me about what we believe as a church. Amen. <laughs> what Bible do you use? What doctrine do you preach? And she started, I, evidently I gave her the right answers because she's here. <laughs> Amen. That's but, good. Why don't more people do that? That's right. Uh, she's concerned about what's being taught, whether it's truth or not, and that's a good Very thing. Good. I appreciate Very that. Good. So you pray for Miss Janelle and her family, and it's good to have her dad and her Amen. brothers and sisters with us. And I know it's not all of them. They've got a few more in their family. Uh, but uh, you need to talk to Brother Steve. Uh, Y'all are big families. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Miss Mom, not Brother Steve. Right. He might not be able to give you anything. <laughs> but uh, anyway, no, it's what a blessing. We're, we're happy to have you. Hey. Honestly, we're happy to have you. I don't want to close. <laughs> Anybody else got anything? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? and seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Amen. Amen. I wish it was Saturday. We can come back to church tomorrow. <laughs> yes, ma'am.
That's a mission field just as big as the just as big as the right. subdivision down the road. And so we need to be busy. Mr. Cookie's very right. All right. Anybody else? Well, let's stand and we'll dismiss in a word of prayer. Uh, Miss Janelle, I won't have you stand in the back, but as you leave, tell her you're glad to have her. Amen. Uh, love on her a little bit. It's okay. Just let her know that you're happy. That we're happy, more than happy, to have her as now a family member. Yep. <laughs> so, all right, let's go, Lord, for our prayer. Heavenly Father, we continue. Lord, in prayer tonight, Lord, I...